friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise, Vice President of the Fancy Mustache Club of Southwestern Ontario. <laughs> While most commonly kept pet snakes are usually pretty easy to tame down, sometimes you run into a noodle that needs some extra work. Or perhaps you've decided to try your hand at taming down a more challenging species. Well, you're in luck, because today I'm going to share five and a half tips you might not have heard of that will help you build a great bond with your upsetty spaghetti. It shouldn't be a surprise that snakes are wired a little differently than most conventional pets. They didn't evolve a social relationship alongside us like dogs, nor did they go out and domesticate humans like cats did. Fundamentally, snakes are kind of set up to fear a big warm-blooded predator like humans. Some species are calmer than others, either just by nature or through many generations of captive breeding. But a snake's out-of-the-box default operational setting is usually I am prey for something like that. Me. I should have pointed the other way around, but you get the idea. And it can take some time and effort for them to get past that line of thinking. Over the last 20-ish years, there has been a huge shift in our understanding of snake intelligence. Sadly, popular belief, even amongst people in this very hobby, is still often one of snakes are dumb, primitive creatures that have no emotions and they are often treated as such. She's about to go and tell you that you're wrong sometimes even by well-meaning keepers. The truth is, snakes can think and feel and reason and learn. They just do it a little differently than we do. Our job as their caretaker is to try and teach them in a way that they can understand that we are not a threat. And over time, have them learn that we can be a source of security, heat, food, enrichment, and even affection. All things snakes need. Hi, editing Annalise here, editing the video that this is gonna be part of. Now, some of you might argue that snakes don't need affection from us, and that's fair, but adding, oh, they sometimes like affection too, after the all things snakes need line, kind of made it lose its punchiness, but you get it, right? And while snakes might not really need our affection, many of them sure do like it. Every living thing deserves kindness, yeah? Just about any reptile content creator out there has probably done a video or has referenced techniques on how to tame down your snake. And for good reason, it's a very common question and a critical skill to develop for caretakers. The advice you'll see from reputable keepers and creators is probably all good advice. Things like keep your movements slow and steady, stay calm, be confident in your approach, don't smell like their food, don't loom over your snake, get them used to being touched everywhere, that kind of thing all good advice. But today, I want to focus on some things that I do that you can use if you have a snake that is maybe not responding to the basics as well as you'd like. Or maybe your snake is fine and you're looking to elevate the relationship and the level of trust the two of you share. And here's the best part. Come here. Come here. These aren't necessarily just for snakes either. This stuff works with other reptiles too. But Keep that to yourself, eh? I might eventually want to do a tips and tricks to tame your lizard using these same techniques. And if you go blabbing now that these tips work for lizards too, that video will bomb. So help me out, eh? Shh. Okay, first up, and it might surprise you, is... Keep your animals in front opening enclosures. When I started this hobby, someone, I don't remember who, actually it was probably multiple people, said to me, spend the extra money on a front opening enclosure. But when we started this journey, my parents were 100% financing this adventure and my dad is cheap. And a $40 top opening tank with a janky wire lid beats a $300 brand new front opening enclosure. The advantage is not just for taming down your snake, but overall of a front opening enclosure are huge. You don't need to fiddle with the lights to get the lid off which is so, so annoying. You're not coming in from the top like a predator to get your snake. Because you can take the top and the doors off, you have so much more room and access to do cooler custom builds and backgrounds. It's easier to do spot cleaning. They're, they're just all around great. So if you can get or build one in the size you need, you really should get it. But as far as I'm concerned, one of the biggest advantages of these enclosures is not often talked about. They give you a better chance to visit your animals in their environment instead of taking them out into yours. And it's super easy. Here's what I do. When the snakes are out and active, I open the doors. I lean in and I just chill. Try not to act like a predator. Don't stare directly at your animals and don't get all up in their face. Keep your movements slow. You know what I mean. Really, you are just there to hang out. 
more often than not, sometimes right away, sometimes after a bit of time, but more often than not, my snakes will come over to check me out, see what I'm doing, maybe even crawl around on me and explore with no pressure. They will come and go. Sometimes they will even stay on me or use me to climb out. And if they do that, I might take them out. But this exercise is just about sharing space with them in an environment they feel safe in. Do this often enough and you become kind of a fixture in that environment and they learn that they don't get food or have to come out every time the doors open. So they are less inclined to have a food aggressive response or even get scared while you're just doing maintenance. You being in their house is just another way to get them used to your presence, you know? While you are in there, pet your snakes. I'm not talking about handling here, that's something else. I'm talking just, just touch your snake. You should do this with snakes not in front opening enclosures too. Just, you know, do it with all of your animals. But try to touch your snake as often as is reasonable. Basically, open up your enclosure, tap around to make sure that the snake is awake, and give them a little pat or rub while they are still in the enclosure. Nothing extensive, it might only take a few seconds as you walk by or as part of a larger session in their tank. But either way, it works great. You're just getting them used to your touch while not being held. It's a physical interaction with you in their space and is another way to show them that they aren't getting taken out or fed each time the enclosure gets opened or they are touched. You are of course going to want to be careful with doing this with super skittish snakes or a snake that bites first and asks questions later. But for many snakes, this is super simple and effective. I'll demonstrate through B-roll with my Doom Rolls boa. Tosara is out basking and is very, very pregnant and pretty cranky to be honest, but that's okay. I'm going to open the enclosure. I'm going to talk to her and tap the ground or hide to alert her to my presence. Just wanna make sure she's awake, right? So that I don't startle her. So I tap until she looks at me. There it is. Then I just give her a bit of a gentle thumpy pat, maybe a bit of a massage, and that's it. Hobbs loves it. Callie, thumbs up. Fingers, no. Again, for this exact reason that we don't do this with fingers, if your snake is super reactive or bitey or food aggressive right off the bat, do this with caution or don't do it at all. But if your snake is chill, or at least biting is not their go-to reaction, this can be a great low stress way to interact with your friend and get them used to being touched. Next up, pay attention to temperature. Now, I'm about to give you some seemingly contradictory information here. Which way you go will vary depending on the situation. If a snake is cool, and I'm talking appropriate cool side temperature hasn't headed over to the heat lamp yet kind of cool, not, you know, actually cold, you may find that your snake is more docile and easier to handle. As cold-blooded creatures, they get a lot of the energy they need to be a snake from the external sources around them the sun in the wild, uh, a heat lamp or heat mat or heat, radiant heat panel in captivity. So when they are cool and have less energy, they are less active. Without all that energy to get all wiggly and upset, you might have a much easier handling session. They start out calmer because they don't have the energy to be upset -y. And you have a nice stress-free session. You are also a source of heat for your cold-blooded reptile. So by providing that necessary resource, you can help foster a sense of security and build a bond. So it's best to handle your snake when they're cool. Got it. Not so fast. It could be a great approach, but it could also be not a great approach. Here's where handling cool snakes could be an issue. The brain on a cold-blooded animal, like a snake, needs energy to function at its best, like any brain. When cold, their cognitive ability may be less than optimal. This means it might take a little more time for your snake to recognize you, or they might be more reactive to you as a threat versus, oh, it's just my human. They just can't process fast enough, so they may just default to, yeah, bite it. In these cases, if your snake is allowed to warm up first before handling, they will more readily recognize you, picking up on what's happening and identify this as part of the routine. So is it better to handle your snake when they are warm or when they are cold? Yes. Your handling session with a warm snake could start from a place of awareness and mental clarity as opposed to a state of confusion or anxiety because their brain isn't warmed up yet. But a warmed up snake might have a full tank of gas which makes getting them out of the enclosure or handling more difficult. 
Conversely, with a cold snake, you have a snake with less energy to bite, flee, or get worked up. So you may get an easier handling session, but they might not really know what's going on with the same understanding and might actually be scared and unable to react the way that they might want to. Either could be the right approach for you. And to figure that out, you need to pay close attention to your snake's temperature and how your snake reacts at different ranges and go from there. Listen to your snake, you know? Next, we've got target training. This is really useful if you have a snake that thinks that everything is food until they confirm that it isn't with their teeth. It's pretty straightforward. Before you feed your snake, you show them a target like this. This is actually my Tegu Jump Jumps target. It's a dollar store toy top glued to a dowel. Fancy, I know. Anyway, you show them the target, allow them to see or engage with it, tongue flick or a little snoop boop, sometimes a strike at the beginning. Then you introduce the food in front of the target. If you are consistent over time, they will learn that when the door opens and there is no target, there is no food. Hobbs is being difficult. No food, no food response. Yeah? How well snakes pick this up will vary based on species and individual snake. My king snake, I think, gets it, but she still kind of hopes everything is food. I just get excitable as to choice, like to have my options open. She doesn't bite at least, but she sure does come out super excited like. Hobbs, on the other hand, who like I said is giving me a bit of a hard time, figured this out after two sessions which is how long it took Jub Jub to, by the way. I just kind of did it out of curiosity to see how he would pick it up and didn't really do it consistently or for long because he's not generally food aggressive. Just for a laugh, I decided to try it out after a lengthy hiatus, like a year and a half lengthy hiatus. And he reacted exactly the same as he had previously. He totally remembered the drill. Yeah, no, snakes are dumb. Anyway, if you want some tips on how to target train your snake properly, I highly recommend you check out Lori Torini on YouTube. She has so many videos that show you exactly how to do this and a whole bunch more on choice-based handling. Lori is a trained animal behaviorist and the stuff she does with her snakes is absolutely unbelievable. Everyone who has a snake should be watching her channel, so go subscribe to Lori. I won't even be mad if you leave this video to go and do that. Just, just come back and finish this one when you're done, yeah? Okay, thank you. Next up is double down when they bite. What does that mean? Well, if your snake strikes at you or bites, you need to bite them back twice as hard. Really assert your mammalian dominance. I'm joking, of course. And if you didn't pick up on that and thought that that was a real serious good idea, maybe don't get a pet snake or a pet of any kind if you think that biting your pet to make them obey you is a good idea. What I actually mean is if your snake bites you, Ow. Ow. A normal first reaction might be to end the handling session and put your little friend back to calm down. It makes sense. You probably don't want to get bitten again. Your snake is obviously stressed or at least upset. Putting him back so you can both calm down is a perfectly reasonable approach, right? Sure. Except it isn't. Remember, these guys aren't dumb. They can recall past experiences and learn. If your snake bites you and you immediately put them back, what did you just teach your snake? Yeah, if I bite the human that is scaring me, they leave me alone, right? You're basically reinforcing that defensive behavior. What's going to happen the next time you try to get your snake out and they aren't feeling it? Yeah, bit. Yeah. So don't train your snake to bite you. <laughs> if you wanna go from this, ow. Ow! Ow! I'm not even moving. He's so grumpy now. Oh. To this. Listen up. If your snake is striking at you, stay calm and keep with the gentle handling. I found smooshing a bitey snake into my shirt was really effective. Your snake will pretty quickly figure out that biting isn't going to work, and as long as you are slow and calm, they should calm down too. And over time, they will be less and less likely to give you a toothy kiss. Bonus, that goes along really well with this one, keep them moving. Like, smoosh them into your shirt, but don't let them stop moving. Because they'll figure out that biting doesn't work, so they'll try to get away. Keep them moving. Just don't let them stop moving because they, ooh, they stop moving. They think I'm trapped, I need to bite. That's a helpful one. My last tip is a big one, empathy. 
try to see the world the way they do. Put yourself in your snake's shoes, so to speak. Don't look at it from way up here and looking down into their enclosure. Instead, imagine you are way down there where they are living. How would you feel safe and secure in that scenario? Does the enclosure you've provided for your snake meet that need? Obviously, we know that all the basics need to be covered. Is the enclosure big enough? Are the heat and humidity okay? Uh, do they have multiple hides? That kind of thing. But there are other considerations to really optimize their home. Are there enough hides? Are they arranged in the best places? Is there other cover that allows your snake to move around unseen by you if they want? Are there different surfaces and objects arranged at different heights to explore? Can you rearrange them for something new? You need to consider all of this while imagining you are the one who is living in the space as a snake. The safer and more secure and more enriched your snake feels, the easier it will be for them to build a trusting relationship with you. It's not just in their enclosure either. What's going on in the environment outside of the enclosure while you are handling? Are there things moving around that might frighten your snake? A ceiling fan, curtains billowing in the breeze, other pets darting about? What about smells? Other pets again, cleaners, chemicals. Do you have a fireplace going? Cooking smells. I'm not saying that all of these will affect your snake's peace of mind. <laughs> Mouse problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not funny. I'm not saying that these will affect your snake's peace of mind, but they could. So be mindful of things that you might not even notice day to day, but could be very stressful to a nervous snake. A little sympathy can go a long way. Now, I did promise five and a half tips. So here's the last half tip. Don't do any of the things I just talked about or what anyone else says either. Yes, I'm aware. Look, these are great tips and will work most of the time, but sometimes what your snake really needs, and I find this works great with baby snakes, is to just be left alone. If you are finding that your snake isn't getting any easier to handle, even after trying all of these tips, stop. Just stop. For a while, at least. You might be the one who is stressing out your noodle while you're attempting to train them to not be stressed out by you. That is no good. Feed your snake, of course, clean out their poops, do your maintenance, be present near your snake, but just don't interact directly with them. Just let them be. It might take a few weeks, it might take months, but eventually your snake will feel safe enough to be handled and you can start building your relationship and conditioning from there. I mean, that's what we did with Johanna here. We didn't touch her for a couple of months because she was still super skittish and tail buzzing and striking in defense. And so we just stopped handling her for a few months. And well, now we have a snake who's perfect. All she needed was some time. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you found these tips helpful. I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks to my patrons on Patreon. I put a lot of effort into giving my snakes homes they find enriching and comfortable, and these fine folks here help make that happen. You guys are great. If you would like to lend your support for as little as $2 a month, you can do that by heading on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl. Oh, by the way, if you have any other tips for helping tame down snakes that you have not heard anyone else talk about, please leave them in the comment section below. Be nice to each other, obviously, but help each other out as well. Thanks to you all for watching, commenting, sharing, subscribing. That really helps me out. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. Like, look at this little baby. He's so sweet. I mean, he did bite me like three times, but he was scared. I assert my dominance too. Mah.